Hello. Today, I'm going to be analyzing chapter 18, probably just the first half. There's a lot to go over. And let me just say, there's a lot of very important shit in this chapter. You need to reread this chapter because this chapter pretty much is screaming at the sequels, what's going to happen, and everything. So you, And shit's getting real, okay, in chapter 18. You know, there's so much shit in chapter 18. I reread this thing like three times just because there was just so much badass moments and just... Oh my God, it's crazy! All right, so um, quick re review of what I'm gonna do is kind of talk about Rue's song, how I'm thinking there's a deeper meaning to that, and some of my predictions. I'm also gonna talk about how Katniss is actually developing. I'm also gonna talk about um, uh, it's more like movie expectations and a scene they could do really well in the movie, and if they pull it off right, I think and how they should do it. And the fourth one I can't remember. But I'm sure I'll think of it all in the way. Oh, yes. The religion. Or, you know, thoughts of afterlife. Um, we never really see any kind of, like, religion or, you know, any kind of faith thing in the Hunger Games series so far. So there is a hint of it in Chapter 18. So I like that. I like that they're introducing all the kind of elements of a world. You know, I've, I've seen some, I've read so many books where the future will have, like, no religion. And, you know, people, oh, well, get rid of religion. But, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just not realistic. You know, there's going to be someone out there that has some kind of... It doesn't have to be a religion. It could just be like, oh, yes, after you die, you go here. You know, something like that, you know? So anyway. I mean, even in ancient civilizations, that's the first thing they started thinking of. So it would it would definitely make sense for them to have here, and I like that you put it in here. Maybe. Maybe I'm just reading too deep into this. But anyway, let's start off. So instantly, not even... She doesn't even hesitate. Katniss straight up murders this kid. Not even... He doesn't have time to reach for his spear. The arrow goes through his fucking neck. Dead. Like that. That's straight up murder. Okay? Katniss, you know, you're a murderer. I'm just saying, you know, people want to say it's justified. She murdered a little girl. Okay. You know? But, I don't know. It's me. I don't know. You know how I stand on murder. So, she's... does pretty cold-blooded i'm not gonna lie but i understand i mean obviously i'm not saying you know she's it's wrong in the sense you know whatever i'm just saying that you know it's pretty dark pretty intense and i can't wait to see that movie actually it's gonna be pretty cool uh so let's talk you know candace is by ruth's side not gonna lie started tearing up a little bit just, just a little bit just a little bit you know um then I, I think it's funny how uh, Katniss basically cannot distinguish Rue and Prim. There just seems to be such a similarity that she, even in her inner thoughts, she just cannot make the difference. She was like, oh yeah, um, but if this is Prim's, I mean Rue's last request. Like, she, even in her inner thoughts, she couldn't make the difference. It's just hilarious to me. It's, uh, it's either, I think that either Rue is a substitute for Prim but I don't really think that actually now because I think Rue is actually more important to Katniss than Prim is. And I'll give in my reasons for that a little later, but let's talk about something else. Uh, Rue's song and how I think there's a shit, there's a huge deep meaning, huge deep. There's a big meaning behind this. And I think there's something a lot deeper. And maybe I'm just looking too, I'm looking probably too deep. Okay, I like to do that though in books. Um, Especially with trilogies, because you really can kind of see what's going to happen in the future. So, there's three things I want to point out about this song. When it was made, the lyrics, and also um, something. Probably I'll remember at the last second. I'm like Rick Perry right now. Anyway. <laughs> uh, so topical. Anyway. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about the time frame of when the song was made. And Katna says it's very old. Um, and she says that it was made long ago in, the, in our hills, so basically where she comes from. And if you think about it, right a long time ago, probably to her, it means something like right around the fall of North America and right about the rise of Pan Am. So if there is, I think there's some kind of significance to that time. So let's pay attention to the time for now. So right now we know it's right around the fall and rise, okay? Let's keep it that right there. Um, now let's talk about... Uh, the lyrics. So let's listen to this and see if this kind of hints at something. Deep in the meadow, under the willow, a bed of grass, a 
soft green pillow. Deep in the meadow, hidden far away, a cloak of leaves, a moonbeam ray. Seems kind of like, you know, a little poet, you know. I, I read that kind of out of context for, you know, it's in different places, but there's like these subtle lyrics that kind of hint at there's something there. There's something in the metal. There's, I mean, it, it kind of, you know, people would say, you know, probably, oh, yeah, well, there, she's just saying that's a comfortable place you can go. You know, you're at home, you're in the wilderness, or blah, blah, blah. No, it symbolizes this, the afterlife, and oh, no, no. But I don't know. You know, if it was made long ago, who knows? Maybe there is some kind of thing hidden there. Maybe that's it. it that's like its cover up. You know, I don't know. That's that's the second piece of evidence. Now, if you combine the time and the lyrics, um, and not only that, uh, there was something else that I, I had a point I wanted to make, but um, for right now I can't remember. But anyway, doesn't that seem kind of interesting? You know, I think that maybe there might be some kind of hidden, some you know something deeper to that. You know, who knows. That's my prediction, anyway. I would like to see that happen. I think I think Suzanne Collins, in general, just has so many things she could go with. Seriously, there's so many things that looks like it's foreshadowing something and it doesn't happen, at least yet, anyway. And I think that she could definitely do that later, anyway. So, anyway, I'm sorry. Uh, let's talk about the afterlife. So, in the song, it talks about, you know, basically, you know, this is it's kind of hinting out that's where you go when you die, you know, everything will be okay, you know. She said that she did it to kind of, you know, comfort people that were starving, but, you know, there seems to be more hints of afterlife here, and I'm going to get into that later. Um, I shouldn't have said that right now. First, let me talk about this movie, Expectation. Um, if they really want to pull this scene off good in the movie, this is how I think it should be done. So imagine this, right? You know, Rue, it gets dead quiet, no music, and then when she starts singing have like a soft piano music going on a little bit, you know? You know, just a little soft, you know, little one note at a time kind of music. And then just have everyone in the capital, everyone in the district looking at the T V and just dead silent. And maybe, you know, and just, just really looking at the screen, looking at this scene, and then Katniss singing and then slow music and then and then it shows Ruth slowly dying. And then maybe also uh you know, this is the part I'm talking about. Um, right when she starts getting to the last lyric, you know, she starts choking up or whatever, and she says it's very audible. Audible. I don't even want to say that. But anyway. So, yeah, she's, you know, she, tears are coming out of her eyes, and she sings the last verse. That's when the orchestra should kick in when those mocking jays, come, like, they when they start singing her song back. And I think that would be a beautiful moment. I get goosebumps just thinking about that. I think that would be, just be really intense. You know, it's like, um, and just have like all the mocking jays echo through the forest, you know, this song that's just like really powerful. That'd be such a powerful moment. The fact that Suzanne Collins thought of this moment really makes me respect her as a writer a lot because that's a really powerful scene. Um, just the way it's set up too, because if you think about it, um, if you think back, um, Katniss never really had the mocking jays sing back to her. You know, it was always Katniss's dad because he had a beautiful voice, apparently. But, um, you know, Katniss never really got the Mockingjay's attention very much. But here, they did. And that that's just so awesome that every Mockingjay picked up this song. So it was just like a really beautiful scene. Um, I liked it a lot. Uh Yeah, I don't know. I, 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 if, I, if that happens in the movie like I talked about, probably stand up and applaud. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I might actually do that. Um so yeah. That was pretty cool. I don't know. Would anybody else think that's pretty cool? So let me talk about how Cadness is becoming likable. It's weird. I'm not used to this. I'm not used to looking at Cadness and thinking, Wow, that's normal. <laughs> it's weird. It's weird for me. Okay? I'm used to Katniss being irrational. So, but I'm, I'm joking, of course. But Katniss is actually, it's kind of funny. Everything I, everything I said I really didn't like about Katniss, she flips around right now. So that's really cool. And let's talk about that. She says, you know, to hate the boy from District 1 uh, seems inadequate. It's the capital I hate for doing all this to us. Thank you, Katniss. Because I'm sick and tired of her hating these tributes when the tributes are just 
playing part of the you know, they're in the game, you know. She shouldn't hate the tributes. Um, definitely, she, I'm glad that she's realizing it's the capital. And I love here, this is what makes me go, yes, there's going to be a lot of shit going down right now after this line. I hear, uh, you know, she's like, you know what? Gail's rants uh, against the capital are no longer pointless. No longer to be ignored. Mm. Okay. You know, that shows that there's going to be some kind of action, you know. And and it says Rue's death forced me to comfort my own, uh, confront my own fury against the, you know, the cruelty and justice I talked about. Uh, that's really, I'm telling you, when Rue died, it really made her step up. Like I was actually made a joke in one of my earlier reviews about how in order for Katniss to grow, you'd have to murder everyone important to her. And I think I said that before I we even got introduced to Rue. So it's kind of. I mean, it's true. I mean, even though I was joking with that, it's true. When whenever some you lose someone important to you, at least in a story anyway, the character usually develops a lot after that. Like it, it's like a huge increase of development. And right after someone important to them dies, their resolve instantly sparks. You know, Katniss semi had a goal. You know, like oh, okay, I might survive long enough, maybe win if I can. You know, but whenever someone important to the main character dies instantly the resolve the determination the goal the high action of the story whatever it's called the climax whatever here comes you know that's happening right now um shit's getting real and this this book i made stop doing these reviews uh not all all together but basically just so i can kind of read all this since it's pretty cool so anyway but i might i might do it after every chapter, but I really want to keep reading all this. So the next thing uh, sh I really like that she did is she actually understood Peta. You know, I I bitched at Katniss when Peta was basically saying, you know, hey, I want to be myself and blah blah blah, and I'm, you know, the capital. I don't want them, I don't want them to show that they own me and all this shit. But she was actually she, you know, at first she was like, oh well, uh, it doesn't fill our stomachs, uh, you know, being irrational as she is. But then she finally. You know, she's like, you know, I understand what he's saying. Thank you, Katniss. Thank you for once in your fucking life being just a little bit logical. I'm sorry for my language. And I liked how she's like, you know what? I need to show the capital that they are accountable. I need to show them that Rue's death isn't on the District 1's hands, but the capital. So, and I like how she does it. She puts a bunch of flowers around Rue's body. And, you know, because it's funny, you know, if they wanted to cut away from that, they wanted to cut away from districts, you know, treating each other nicely, you know, the hint of teaming up, that's exactly why the capital would probably put it away, uh, you know, show it away, because think about it, they want the districts to hate each other. If they show a scene where the District 12 and District 11 have, like, a beautiful moment together, and then and then they start bonding, that's going to lead to rebellion, I'm telling you. Especially in that context of how the capital basically forced that to happen, but she decorated the body so that way they, when they they have to show the body going up to the hovercraft, so if they're gonna know that a district twelve person uh, basically made a graves in a sense, you know, for someone else that shows a lot of respect. So, yeah, and that's kind of cool because District Eleven actually sends her some bread. I mean, it's the bread's not really significant, you know, itself, but it's more like you know, they're actually trying to say thank you. They they actually spent their money to say thank you to her. I like that. Um, so now let's talk about the religion slash possible spirituality kind of thing of the Hunger Games world. I'm going to give you three pieces of evidence. Eh, you know, whatever. I want to call it evidence. But anyway. So the thing is, she says something like, "She could, uh, she should really be asleep in that meadow after ball." And that meadow, she could be asleep. All right, talking about something like afterlife. That's what she's saying. But here's something that really brings it out. Right after she said that, a mockingjay goes up to her, and you know I couldn't sing any other songs, but I don't know where it starts singing Rue's song. That that little four note thing that basically, and remember that song means that Rue is okay. So that, that Mockingjay went on the branch and sung that to Katniss. She, the Mockingjay came up to Katniss to sing that song to her after she said, maybe Rue may be in that meadow. 
you know, people may see that scene and may see that and be like, what the hell is the Mockingjay? You know, what is it doing? I think it's trying to say that Rue moved on. She's in a better place. She's okay. I'm just saying that it looks like it's hinting at an afterlife. Not saying that there is an afterlife in the Hunger Games world, but I'm just saying that, you know, that's basically the message right there. Or at least that's what Katniss is thinking. Or, you know, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Like, it just seems like it's hinting towards the whole possibility of there being something else. And if people say, like, oh, well, that's stupid, whatever, blah, blah, blah. You know, look at it. You know, it's it's unrealistic to me to not have that. To not have that idea of afterlife. Not saying if it, whether or not it's true or not. But just because, you know, if you look at all our ancient civilizations, every single culture has some kind of idea of afterlife. So it wouldn't make sense for the Hunger Games world not to have one. You know? I'm, I'm just saying... I hate when I see futuristic, you know, books or whatever, and there's no mention really of any kind of, like, religion or, you know, spirituality. There's just basically, you know, you know, crazy stuff happening. I don't know. So I, I like that. I like she actually included something like that in there. And she didn't have to go deep into it either. And then, like I talked about earlier, I knew I was right about this, how she says, you know, I don't know how it knows, but it must hear things that humans can't, the Mockingjays. And I knew it, baby. I knew that these Mockingjays were important because there is no reason, no reason at all to include this unless it was significant and or unless it's going to be significant later. Because why would she include it? She's already mentioned like five times in this book so far, and I'm keeping track on it. You know, the second, third time I saw it, that's when I started going like, you know, this is going to be really significant later. So anyway. Um... Uh, okay, so actually I'm going to stop the video now, simply because I don't want to go on for too long, and I'm not even close to finishing chapter 18, so I might finish the, um, I'll do chapter 18 second part, um, soon. Um, anyway, thank you very much for watching, I doubt many people watch this, but <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, have a good one, and hopefully this maybe you learned something, and don't, and please don't comment on that video, oh, you're wrong, that's not what's gonna happen, and, oh, oh, er, because, you know, I haven't read it yet, don't spoil it for me, you know, um, and even if that doesn't happen, I still think that, that, you know, that should be a possibility you think of, because, you know, if you read a book from now on, you know, maybe you can notice things like that, you know, you, you read something like, you know, a line, and you think, hmm, what was the purpose of that, what was the purpose of a bird coming up and singing to the main character, Oh, wow, there's actually a pretty deep meaning to that. You know, maybe. You know? So, I don't know. It's cool. I like indirect details like that that aren't telling you that Rue is this and the Hunger Games believe in this. You know, in the future, you know, they don't believe in this. But she actually just includes small details like a bird coming up to Katniss and singing. Uh, that somehow symbolizes, you know, so much more. So, I like that. Anyway. um, I'm going to go. And hopefully this recorded this time because I actually did this twice. That sucked. Alright guys, goodbye.